We are living in a world of digital platforms and tech giants. But are these platforms the result of healthy competition, of network effects and ingenious entrepreneurs? Or are they creating powerful incumbents that impede innovation and competition? In this complicated and heated debate, it's important to rely on data, data about what platforms do and what their effects are. Today, let's talk to Luis Aguiar about his recent paper on platforms, power, and promotion, evidence from Spotify playlists. Luis is an assistant professor at the University of Zurich, and he has co-authored the paper with Joel Waldvogel from Minnesota. Welcome, Luis. Thank you, Stefan. Why don't you tell us a bit about your paper and what you found? Sure. So um, the main motivation for this paper is actually twofold. So the, the first one relates to the very important uh, debate around uh, platform power. So today we observe many platforms dominating uh, their respective markets. Uh, you can think of advertising, search, or retail. And this is generating a lot of concerns about whether these platforms are actually becoming too powerful. And so the music industry uh, offers a nice context to study this particular question of platform power and how they can affect consumers' uh, ultimate consumption decisions. So one important aspect uh, is that digitization has prompted major changes uh, in the music industry. Uh, if you look about two decades ago, uh, you had a market that was essentially um, you know, uh, operated through two sets of gatekeepers. So on the one hand, you had promotion that was handled by radio stations, and this was a relatively fragmented market with uh, many radio stations. On the other hand, uh, the distribution was handled by, um, you know, uh, record stores, which was also a relatively fragmented market. Uh, and um, uh, so essentially consumers had various options to get their music from in that, from that perspective. Uh, nowadays, uh, both promotion and distribution are being handled by a very few set of streaming platforms, uh, and they simultaneously and collectively dominate uh, promotion and distribution together. And within these platforms, obviously Spotify is one of the biggest player uh, with, uh, and has the largest uh, market share. And so um, promotion in the digital world is mainly done now through playlists. Uh, so you can think of them as, you know, the old radio, essentially. And um, the, the interesting point about uh, playlists at Spotify, if you look at the data, uh, even though, you know, anybody is free to create a playlist and have it followed, um, if you look at the data, the most followed playlists are all owned by Spotify, or most of them, at least. So the top 25 uh, playlists are owned by Spotify, meaning that they decide what to put on these playlists. And even if you look at the top thousand playlists, 85% uh, of the followers are following playlists that are owned by Spotify. So Spotify clearly dominates playlists on its own platform and has potential power to influence consumption if these playlists have an effect on consumption. So that's our first question really does does do these playlists have an effect on consumption uh, the second motivation as uh, as i was alluding to is uh, relating to uh, the effects that digitization has had on the amount of music that is produced in the market so uh, digitization has led to a very important lowering of production cost of music and so nowadays we have literally millions of songs entering spotify each year it's about 5 million, which is an astounding number, really. So this creates an important product discovery challenge for consumers. Um, and playlists, again, here can play a role in helping uh, consumers discover new products. So that's kind of the second question of the paper uh, related to the role of playlists. And uh, what we do find uh, by focusing on the most prominent playlist at Spotify is that, indeed, uh, Spotify has substantial power to influence both song success and, uh, you know, consumers' decisions. Uh, so appearing on the most prominent Spotify playlist, for instance, uh, which is today's top hits, can lead to ultimately an extra 20 million streams for a particular song, which can translate into $77,000 in extra revenue from Spotify alone. So these are not, you know, small numbers. Um, 
so uh, we also find that appearing on playlists that are more focused on new music released on the platform also help uh, the ultimate success of these songs. And uh, so Spotify also helps the discovery of new products that enter uh, the platform. So the conclusion is essentially that Spotify does have power to both influence consumption and help the discovery of new songs on the platform. Great. So I think this is really interesting because it, it gives kind of a detailed, uh, you know, insight in uh, what's going on in a platform like Spotify. So I'm wondering, you know, so for an individual artist who then whose song gets added to, you know, a playlist by Spotify, this can actually turn into actual revenue, as you show in the paper. Uh, but I'm wondering to what extent this is only kind of about redistribution, like you know, one artist wins, the other artist loses. Or to what extent, you know, can an analysis like this also inform us about, um, you know, welfare effects, about effects in competition and or innovation? Yeah, so that, that's a great point. So uh, it's very hard to make claims about welfare here because, as you say, um, playlists could either draw additional consumption uh, relative to a world where a playlist are not available or they could simply, you know, displace consumption that would have otherwise uh, happened on the platform anyway. Uh, so unfortunately, we cannot really say uh, anything related to this effect of the playlists. However, um, there are important implications if you think in terms of competition or, as you said, you know, indie artists or specific artists uh, that uh, release their songs on Spotify. So uh, if Spotify you know, controls so much of the playlists and if playlists do have an effect, as we show, it can become a problem if Spotify starts having um, you know, incentives to promote certain artists over others. Uh, why would they want to do that? Well, for instance, they may want to promote artists that are cheaper for them. So for instance, uh, songs that uh, require them to pay lower royalties uh, so that would be clearly an incentive for them uh, for uh, to reduce their cost of maintaining their platform. Uh, at another extreme, you can imagine that if Spotify starts creating their own music, or if they become kind of a label by uh, you know signing direct licensing deals with um, with artists, they will have strong incentives to promote these artists over others uh, on their playlists. And so that's when um, you know. Uh, these competition uh, issues can uh, really become uh, uh, relevant. So I just want to make clear that, you know, in our paper, we, we don't show any evidence uh, that Spotify is actually distorting competition in that way or, um, you know, even abusing their power. But we do show that it has uh, a lot of power over what people ultimately consume through these playlists. And so, um, Given the, the potential for abuse of power, given, given this power, uh, I think uh, our results really suggest that there's a real need uh, to uh, have continued scrutiny as to uh, how firms exercise their power in these markets. So think about, you know, um, Spotify exercising power over these playlists. This reminds me a bit of, you know, a very different setup. Um, supermarkets or bookstores exercising power over, over which products to put on their, um, on their shelves. And um, there are, you know, situations where uh, these uh, stores are charging slotting fees uh, to producers um, in order to allow them to put their products on particular shelves and so on. And so I'm, I'm wondering, you know, to what extent is this a similar situation or is this something totally different? Uh, because now we're talking about digital media music uh, platform. So I think it is very related. Yes. Uh, so you, you can really think uh, of playlist as, uh, you know, shelves in, in a store. Uh, and so each of these are displayed more or less prominently when you open Spotify, just as when you walk in a, a bookstore, you have, you, you have uh, different shelves and, uh, in, in, you know, at the beginning of the store, at the end of the store, and then within the shelves, uh, different positioning of the of the books. And here, uh, it's the same idea. When you open Spotify, you, uh, you are 
presented with different playlists and Spotify decides what to show you. Um, you can also have different playlists shown to you when you look for a song. And so, and Spotify clearly has control over that as well. So really Spotify controls kind of the digital uh, shelf space. Um, and so um, you're absolutely right for many artists uh, because these uh, playlists have s such a large effect. The question is, how do I get into a given shelf? And, um, you know, uh, how do I get into a given playlist effectively? And uh, given our results, uh, Spotify also clearly has an incentive to charge artists uh, or right holders to appear on this list, uh, just as supermarkets or bookstores do uh, when they, uh, you know, self um uh, when, when they sell slots on their on their shelves. Uh, and, and the point you refer to, which is essentially paying to get more uh, exposure, uh, is, is what used to be known as, uh, you know, payola in the old days of the music industry, where record labels would go to the uh, radio stations and pay DJs in order for them to play their music uh, more, essentially. Uh, and um, I would say that the main difference nowadays is that well, Spotify uh, does not charge artists uh, to appear on their playlist, at least to our knowledge and based on, on, on their own claims. But I really think that the analogy is, uh, is spot on, yes. So your paper, you know, benefits a great deal from the fact that Spotify has made this data publicly available and that you can analyze, uh, you know, the effect of, uh, of these playlists. Now, you know, for lots of other companies, such data and industries, such data is probably not available. And probably also Spotify has other data uh, that it doesn't make available. And, and so, so I'm wondering, you know, to what extent this has an impact on the kind of scholarship that, you know, empirical economists um, can do and whether you have any thoughts on this one. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, yeah, as a matter of fact, you know, this paper would not have existed if Spotify hadn't made their data available. And But I really think that uh, access to data is one of the main bottlenecks uh, nowadays when it comes to conducting research uh, on large digital, digital platforms. And, and so it's very important um, it's a very important limitation to what we can learn about these platforms, their behavior and their impact, and our understanding of digital markets uh, more generally. Um, so on the other hand, there's still a lot of empirical studies that are performed on platforms, either by researchers that directly work for these platforms or that are granted access to their data. Uh, but usually this is, uh, you know, conditional on the research question being asked. And so typically you can understand that firms um, are willing to grant access to their data to study questions uh, whose answer is more likely to benefit them or at least not hurt them. Uh, so while there's not necessarily any reason to doubt, uh, you know, the validity of the existing studies, uh, I think uh, this determines the type of questions uh, that are uh, studied in the end and for which we have an answer. And so in that sense, I think it does ultimately kind of bias what we learn uh, about these firms uh, and about these markets. So I think, unfortunately, our time is already up. So uh, thanks a lot, Louis, for participating to today, for sharing us your thoughts about the study. And we're looking forward to seeing your next piece. And thanks for everyone in the audience for listening, and I hope you will join us soon at another episode. Thanks, Louis. My pleasure. Thank you.